So before I even started to film, <laughs> I tried to see if I could get my cat Leodawiana out of the pot by just gently tugging on her. That is not the case. So it is hammer time once again. Welcome to the patio. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am repotting an orchid. I know, right? <laughs> Shocker on an orchid channel. It's good to have you here. By the way, because I'm going to get quite involved with this repot, she is a precious orchid after all. Can I just right out of the gate while I remember ask you to like this video? And if it's your first time on the patio with me and my orchids in southern Spain, please subscribe and consider yourself welcome. Welcome to the gaggle. What I'm also going to try and do is find the footage from when I first repotted her. Actually, I believe that was a simple up pot because after her first year in Lekka and self-watering, she grew an extensive root system. I didn't need to do a root cleanup. So the first time I moved her from one pot size to the next, it was a simple up pot. And I believe that in between that time and now, this being the first time I'm getting into her pot, that she actually has had a root ball cleanup. I will try and find that footage and show it to you while I wrangle with my orchid. Not too shabby. We've got lots of things that we can work with here. I'm quite happy with that. I know it doesn't look like much, but for me it's a lot because my conditions are very challenging for an orchid like this during the winter months. So I'm happy to see I have some viable roots. Also really pleased that this is not going to be, let's say, a fiddle-diddle root ball cleanup. I can pretty much access all the dead roots very, very easily. And oh boy, is she gonna have some amazing space because I think I'm going to pot her up into an XL size pot. This orchid has never ever bloomed for me. I don't wanna be doing this. If she starts to think of coming into bloom and then here I am needing to repot her just when she may come into bloom, so. I have a plan, we'll see how it goes. Let's get her cleaned up. Oh, and this is no bueno. New root tip burn, not good with this orchid. I need all the roots, as you can see, because sometimes orchids won't bloom if their root system isn't big enough for them to be able to produce the energy, absorb the nutrients, and then be able to push a spike and bloom. And sometimes it's just all about light. And sometimes it's because the orchid is not mature enough. I believe mine is mature enough. So it's either the root system needs to be more substantial or I need to increase the light levels without burning her leaves. The roots that failed at the surface here, these are just crispy dry because of my super dry climate for the most part that I have to contend with. Something I just take into consideration and accept. There's nothing really I can do about it except I do miss the surface of my pots a lot. However, if an orchid is coming into active growth with an eye swelling, then I have to be also careful. Don't want to rot it out just because I am in a dry climate doesn't mean I can always go gung-ho around the base and the swelling eyes. And this orchid has so many swelling eyes at the base, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Maybe one or two of them will activate in the process, in the course of the next coming years. Just, you know, because her pot is going to be quite large <laughs> and it's going to look a little bit silly, I think. Out of proportion silly, not because the orchid, but you know, the size of the pot matching the size of the orchid. Uh, but still, what I would like to achieve is to leave her alone for another three years. And with the added leka around her in the bigger pot, then I think what I'm going to be able to achieve is also a level of insulation for all the roots, at least for a certain time. You see, cold temperatures move from the outside in. And if I have more insulation, as in more media around the outer perimeter of the pot, then I'm going to try and consider that the excess leka around her perimeter will actually serve as insulation and the cold won't be able to get in there as aggressively. That is the plan. It has worked with others. Let's see if Daoyana will also appreciate that extra change. So if you wonder what I'm talking about, I'm referring to the evaporative cooling effect that leka has, unfortunately. Although for eight months of the year, this is a fantastic setup for my orchids. Majority of my orchids are in leka and self-watering. 
monitoring. There comes a time when I say eight months, yeah, four months approximately, the night temperatures can get so radically low that even my indoor grow space is an unpleasant place to be for a human. And if you can imagine it's cold for a human, you can imagine warm to hot growers are not happy with the circumstances either. Now, as far as space that I have, plenty. I actually could stop cutting away on roots right now. There would be no issues because the amount of space I'm creating with the larger pot is going to be exponential that these older roots are really not going to make any difference here on there. And being an inorganic media, the decay, the degrading of all the older roots, not a problem either. It's not going to turn my pot acidic in any way, shape or form to make any kind of difference. This is me just having a great time now on the patio, enjoying the sunshine, a somewhat peace and quiet, <laughs> which is unusual, and just getting my hands into an orchid and into a repot that is pretty standard, straightforward, without any kind of, let's say, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It doesn't kick my butt, let's put it that way. <laughs> By the way, I did a three-part little mini-series on pre-repot, on the repot day and post-repot care. All tips, including organic media, because I don't want you to be put off by seeing me with Lekka and self-watering and saying, yeah, that's not my setup. That means if you're still here, of course, but I have been growing in organic media in the past. So it's not like I'm limited to when it comes to knowledge and experience to just this form of growing orchids. And she has had her pre-repot treatment for the last two days, while I didn't soak the entire pot because I didn't want to kill off any more roots, I did give her a lot of calcium and magnesium to begin with. I didn't put any seaweed in because it wasn't allocated for the rest of the orchids. So what she's going to get now afterwards when I fill her reservoir is calcium nitrate with seaweed. And my seaweed is green. It's cold pressed, so it's green. You won't see it in the water, but it is in there together with calcium nitrate at, because she's a big orchid, 300 parts per million to begin with. And then when the ice swell, let's see how much we can put into her and see how much she can take without the surface of the media going all salty. I think she can handle quite a lot because throughout all these years, the surface of my media in this instance did not get salty at all. So she was absorbing all the nutrients. It's sort of my benchmark, including during the winters to see how the nutrients that I do apply for the winter are being absorbed without accumulating salt at the surface. And during the summer, it's a benchmark as well because of the dry conditions, it creates a dry top layer. And that means evaporation is pretty quick and the absorption of nutrients, the time frame is somewhat limited and reduced. So if I have all that moisture evaporating at the surface, faster than anything is being absorbed, I will get salt buildup and then I know to dial it down, especially during the dry months of the year. And then of course, a lot, a lot of flushing. I love flushing, pulling the oxygen into the pot. I think it's like the roots are having a party. Imagine yourself on a hot day and you just stand under a cooling little cascade of water. How refreshing that is. That's what I picture my roots are having a field trip when they feel that water pouring through and around them. I'm coming into the part here where I up-potted her. So there's a little bit of a accumulation of dead roots where she was just up-potted. You can see the clear demarcation line, so to speak, from one pot to the next size. And that's just me being pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pot her up. I think this is as good as I'm gonna do it. I can tell you I should have stopped maybe 20 minutes ago. I just kept going and going, but this is okay. Now with a root system like that, this orchid won't bloom. So that's what we're gonna have to work on to get her a more established root system so that she will have the energy to bloom. At least I believe now I have a fraction of the answer why this Dawiana hasn't bloomed yet. Pot size increase from 20 centimeters to 24 centimeters. I'm going to cheat with my support a little bit. Instead of making a new one, I'm putting down a layer of very large lecker first. Then I'm going to put my support on. This way it raises it up and I get it to the height that I want it at. I'm going to keep her a little bit lower in the pot and more orientated towards the middle in the hopes that all the other eyes that we see 
One of them may activate in the meantime, and keeping her lower in the pot is also going to help out with the humidity buffer and maintain a little bit higher humidity around the base, so we're hopefully to avoid any more root tip burn. If you're worried about seeing eyes now submerged in water, you're not alone. So am I. I am going to take a gamble here in the hopes that my dry climate today, being quite hot, is going to dry them out. It's early enough in the day, and she will be in a very breezy little area on the east side in good warm shade. And so I'm just gonna gamble with this that nothing is going to rot. Let me reposition you. I have to lift her out. And now with the size of the pot, we are going to bump into each other here. <laughs> So with all these eyes having been submerged, I was getting a little bit apprehensive and I thought, you know what, drain her. So that's what I did in order then to fill around with a little bit more lecker. She is super top heavy. So I added another wire around the top and scrunched the structures together, keep her as stable as possible. Just gonna use some of the old soaking water, pour it through, por que no? I've done a pest check. So I'm just double checking. There's little white dots down here. And if there's anything to say about them, they are no more. I appreciate it if you watched all the way to the end. Thank you so much for your time. It's a massive support. It's hopefully time well spent. And also it gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.